Ladies and gentlemen, Nas has stepped in the building. Sup? Yo, this is this your first time in our Apple Music studio over here, right? It is. It is. The New York City joint. Nah, I like this, man. Look at the views. Yeah. Look at the... This is nice. State of the art. So, so wait. So, I know you, you, know, you own real estate. I'm sure we're going to get into all the business talk. Do you still spend significant amount of time in New York, bouncing back between L.A. and New York? Are you a New York, Miami, L.A. guy, you know? Maybe you might still live in Africa from the Belly movie. We don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm L.A., New York, Miami, sprinkled in there. Got it. So you like to you like to move around. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah. A little bit. We got to get into King's Disease, too. Um, on this album, you even, you know, kind of nod to the people. I think it's on, uh, maybe it's on Rare, where you s say something to the effect of people talking that, you know, I want that old Nas. You know what I mean? And you're like, look, this is where I'm at right now. Talk about Nas, the evolution of the guy that we've loved as one of the dominant, you know, greatest MCs of all time, evolving through time to where you are today. Um, yeah, and Ray, I say, you know, they not evolve, they just not evolving the same. Kind of like a, um, um, something for people to ear to go up on, like, yo, um, you got to evolve. That's just what it's about. If if you want to even keep yourself interested, keep yourself interested in there, you got to evolve with it, you know. Um, that's the only way. That's the only way for me. How, but I guess more specifically, um, you took time, you've taken time away. Like you've gone two, three, four years sometimes without putting out an album. Um, Longer than that. Yeah. <laughs> how, but talk about that evolution. Like how do you do it? Like what are you, what are you doing as an MC, what are you paying attention to? What who's who's helping you with that? I I just like change it, not just evolved in, in music, just in my life. So I took time off to look at other things, and music um, is something that I think that I got I got pretty much together. So when it comes to other things, like if you want to say business then I had to, you know, I had to get that right. So I spent more time on business than music, and that business, and doing the business um, became everything. But music, money is not my everything anymore. It was coming up. It was everything. But after a while, it's like, okay, I want to do different things. I want to see the world. What does it have to offer? What can I, what else can I offer the world? And that took me away from music, you know. I mean, you collab with a lot of new artists. Uh, you got A Boogie, or even on this album. Yeah. Um, YG on this album. Salute. Um, obviously, Hit Boy on this album. Blast yeah. is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Shout that out to Blast. That kid's amazing. Yeah. Um, well, King's Disease One. YG. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Do your thing. I was saying you 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 collabing with a lot of the new generation of artists, but on Store Run, you make it a point that there should. You know, there's a hierarchy. You know what I'm saying? A lot of y'all think I'm the one that's supposed to be running to the store for y'all, which is a <laughs> it's an old yeah. block reference, right? Yeah, Where the kid yeah, come yeah. around. You the yeah. listen, go to the store, get us some, you know, yeah. some yeah. cool menthols, uh, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Some gum and some yeah. what was it, and a couple of quarter waters. Yeah. You know, yeah. and keep the change. Yeah. You know, it was a store run. Yeah, for sure. For but sure. you make that you make that known well, on this record. Why? I mean, it was just like just having different textures, um, different songs, just bringing different um, energy to the album. And each song was just its own planet. And Store Run, I, I just like where, where it hit, uh, put the track together and uh, gave me that feeling that feels it's straight New York, but it's universal at the same time. Whereas YKTV is, that's a banger for, is in his own right, y, YG, my man. He worked with Anthony before, and uh, I met him a while ago, and he do the solid. Uh, a Boogie, I heard a lot of, uh, of his music, and my brother told me a lot of good things about the High Bridge crew and all of that. So, you know, I see A Boogie, and there's always love, and same with Y. So when Hit brings these 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 things to the table, um, it's already natural. Mm -hmm. So when we get to the store run type of records, that's me just stretching, stretching out like, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> it, you know what I'm saying? Just showing you the different uh, styles. So um, store run is that corner music, you know, is is that corner music, but in the right the right cinema sound to it, you know, is 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 just what's needed. Is in in you know on uh, moments I say um, I feel like this is the perfect time to embrace new leaders, accepting my position as the master teacher. Um, I said I stayed away from features for a long time and in in um doing records uh, because I was trying to find my my development. I was trying to find my own sound and it, you know it's not about doing a hundred features. I didn't, you know coming up where we made albums a hundred features meant you was cheating. Mm-hmm. Now is 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 what you're supposed to do because you're supposed to mix it up with different artists because y'all both add something to each other. Both your fan bases collaborate, um, um, combine, right. create some new thing. And, and it shows I, camaraderie in the culture. Camaraderie too. Yeah, and love. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Um, I'm all for that. So it was just about having a balance of the store run record, but this and the next thing. Do you feel um, as if anybody takes Nas, the, the rapper, the MC for granted? Do you feel like cats, there's young cats out here that don't understand where I'm gonna say it like this, where if you come from, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like how far you've come and like um, what you've you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I'm sure there's tons of kids that don't even know who I am. I'm sure they um but I, I don't really think about that. I think about that if it's good, somehow they'll still hear about it. Some somehow it'll 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 come across a playlist or something. So I, I'm more like trying to upgrade and level up my thing. Um, and that's my duty to just level it up so it don't sound like what I did before. King's Disease 2 had to be totally different from part one, just just for myself, for Hit Boy, and for the for our listeners to see that you can you can evolve and you can you can go into different directions um as you should as a as a um as an artist. You should do things that take you up a notch and you know I had to come back in rare form like uh coming after a Grammy um my first Grammy um with King's Disease um I had to had to I felt like I was in rare form just just by making records in this in this point in time I felt like I was just in a special place so the people needed to hear that two albums back to back fully produced by Hit Boy yeah um what happens now? Is there is there, you know, is there a is there a Nas and I don't know uh, another producer type album? Do you stay on this type of thing where you create with a singular producer? Um, have you even had time to think about that? Do you even uh, go through the process like that? No, nah, I haven't had much time to think about it. Um, to me, uh, Hit Boy is a producer of the year. Uh, he got it last year from BET and uh, NAACP. I think he got it this year, uh, producer of the year. I think he's producer of the year this year again. So I can't walk away uh, <laughs> from from uh, that energy. Right. I think um, what we, me and him have is just is just uh, pure music making. There's no, there's no uh, his his uh, music knowledge is is that crazy and. Um, I think when you're working with somebody, that producer has to. There's no ego. There's no. Uh, I'm new. I'm better than you. You're better than me. It's like, yo, let's do something together. Right. It, it was no thoughts of money. It was no thoughts of um, uh, anything other than the music. So that's a that's a thing that um, is just so natural. It just it feels great. Like with Death Row East. That was the first song we worked on, and um, for th- for this album, um, all new records, and we started with Death Row East, and the music, the way by the time we was done with it, I was able to two step to a, a story of mine, and you know I don't, I don't really write to think about dancing a two step, and so um, when I was able to two step to you know with my drink, we're in the studio and having conversations like we had now before the record was out. Every time we played Death Row East in the studio, there was like a two hour conversation afterwards. Like after certain songs, there was like long conversations after it. Um, I like that experience. And Hit Boy brings that that energy. Yeah. 
And that, is that yeah. what you gravitate to as an artist? Like you, yeah. when you work with a producer, it's about what what it feels like in that room yeah. when y'all create together. Yeah, yeah. I work with some of the greatest producers, so um, I, I has that I have that experience now. So um, working with him, it was just like um, um, we meet each other. Like if I'm going here, he's coming here. Right. If he comes, if he goes there with the music, I'm coming there. It's like. That's the way we push each other. Right. And if you, you listen to the production is, um, you know, he, he he just fine tunes this sound just a hair. And then on over here, he, he places this sound here. And it's not too much of this and not too much of that allows me to cut through with the rap. He's not trying to outdo me. I'm not trying to. We're, we're you guys together. Are instruments working together. Facts. Um, on that note, I'm sure there's uh, an MC somewhere studying your conversations, studying your music, because you are uh, one of the greats in rap ever. Um, so it's important to, for people to understand, I think, the dynamic that you just articulated of you working with a producer yeah. and you seeing yourself as a vocal instrument, yeah, partnering with a producer who's bringing other sounds and instruments to complement your storytelling your 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 voice texture, all of these things. Um, is it is it one hundred percent a partnership? He's building, and as he builds in the studio, you're crafting where lyrically that beat sounds and things are taking you. The journey that is taking you on is it really like on some, or is 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 the beat already made? You walk in and then you write. Like what's the uh, Give us the behind the curtain. A lot of times I walk in the studio and his headphones is on. He's like, yo, check this out. It's something he's already working on. And, and as soon as I hear it, 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 it's like, that's the one. Um, yeah, he, he, um, he's like my Quincy, you know what I mean? He's, um, he has that, he's pushing himself thing, you know? So it, it, it becomes... I feel like the next thing I do, if it was the work, if I was to work with Hit Boy on the next thing I do, I think that we might do something that was is is gonna be um, magical. I think what we have is magic, and I think the next thing we do would have to be uh, the next page, and that to me excites me that. That possibility right that now. You know we're there's, no ceil there's no ceiling with him. Like no, no, and and I think we learned so much. The first album, we was just learning each other. This in the middle of it, we said we got to do another one. We got to finish this one first, but we're gonna have to, have to do another one. We knew. Um, I think if we do an, another one, um, I think it's. It, I can't. I'm excited about that idea, um, but you know we're celebrating this one now, so. I, I st I'm still like, I'm still grateful to to the reception I got from from this one, mm. you know. So, you know, I'm just going to enjoy the moment. Uh, Lauren Hill made uh, put everybody on notice. Shout out to you, Miss Lauren Hill, Miss Hill. You know, um, she's was that like, a phone call. Was that uh, y'all y'all yeah. on the text? Yeah, still yeah, to this that, day? that was a text. Yeah, um, it came out and. It just it just blew up and I hit her up. Yo, this is crazy. People are asking me like, "How did I get you on a record?" And she's laughing like, "What do you mean? We just had a tour like a few years ago. Right. We, we kick it all the time." So, but but still, for me to have her on the record was incredible because she's like the nicest. So on the mic, so she was just speaking from in real time. No fluff, no extras, no faking, no frauding. I feel like she doesn't understand how how much she's needed. Sim similar to yourself, like the value of a pure rapper mm -hmm. who is very, very great at that skill, right, uh, is, you know, and I, I, I take it back to, once again, Jada at the Versus. Yeah. The essence. That, that skill set, yeah. yourself, a Lauryn Hill, 
a Jada, a Hove, Killer Mike. You know what I'm saying? There's and there's I'm, I'm leaving Mike. some names Shout off. Out no disrespect, but yeah. those came to the top of my. That skill set to be able to bar it up and make and master the ceremony, which Lauren does on this track nine. Very well. Very well. And she she said, I'm saving souls. Y'all complaining about my lateness. Right. He, you know, when she says that line to me, you realize, whoa, it's not about how show business is set up and show up here and do this and do that. And she said, yo, listen, y'all, I, I hear what y'all saying, but, yo, she, the first line is, in my life right now, I'm concerned with my freedom now. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I'm, but she's like, all my life is right now is concerned with my freedom. Mm -hmm. That's a different individual. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's her first line. She's, she's not out here playing games, man. Yeah. yeah um, thank you, Miss Hill. Thank you, Miss Lauren Hill. Thank you. We can, uh, and by the way, you know, listen, if you are uh, recording on a regular basis, uh, more raps, please. <laughs> you heard you heard it right here. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you heard it right here. Nas, uh, gotta talk verses. You watch them, yeah. But you have said that that's not for you. That's not a that's verses is not a thing that Nas would participate in. Mm. You know, I love where verses is going. So I'm just watching where it's going. I'm sure you saw Jada. And Fab. Yes. Jada yes. handled his business. Yeah, yeah. On that one. Shout out to so, Fab. Shout, shout out to, to Fab. Fab. But Jada, everybody knows yeah. Jada, Jada got that one. So in this one, did you have you had a chance to really look at the Dipset locks in its entirety as a competition and really analyze what Jada was doing up there and, and the way he kind of took over the whole Well, you know, I'm 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 a big, big locks. Fanatic, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. So I always grew up on them. Always like Dipset, how how they turn their thing into a thing. Mm -hmm. But I thought that was great for New York, and I thought that Jada, Styles, and Chic represented the art form like like excellent. And I think you know it was just when when Jada hits the who shot you. Mm. And turns around and goes right on um, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and you like hip hop is like a beautiful thing. Yeah, hip hop is a shining. Yo, and then Jada turned that shit off and was like, "Now I'm just bullying y'all because yeah. they had they mm -hmm. yeah um, went so hard for a second. It was great because verses could do R and B. Yeah, verses could do uh, one twelve versus jagged edge. All of that is crazy. But when you do hip hop in, in its purest form, like how that went down, I think everybody just got like a a booster shot for, for hip hop right there. But did that yeah. make you like the value? I feel like the value of that of a of a, a real dope MC went up in that moment. One hundred percent. Like people were reminded that like this is a different thing. Yeah. Like when you can do what Jada does, yeah. when you can do what Styles does, yeah. when you can do what Sheik does. But you as a you as that type of hip hop MC, did you feel kind of the 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 kind of value increase yeah. in what you do as a as a as a booster music shot. Show? It was the booster shot. Yeah. One thousand percent. Oh, those dudes went up there and and and, and and made everybody in the rap game feel proud. Yeah, for sure.